this is Ashwadi. Welcome to my YouTube channel Shastra Log. Today I am going to discuss on the topic glycolysis. Before that, subscribe my channel and press the bell icon and also don't forget to like my video. So let's move on to our topic. Glycolysis. Biological organisms need energy for its survival. Glycolysis helps to get energy from glucose. Glucose is one of the body's preferred source of fuel in the form of carbohydrates. It occupies a central position in the metabolism of living organisms. It's a good fuel and also a versatile precursor. In the glycolysis, the word glyco means sweet and lysis means splitting. So, glycolysis is the splitting of sweet molecules that is glucose. It is a universal central pathway of glucose metabolism. Glycolysis is the metabolism of one molecule of glucose is degraded in a series of enzyme catalyzed reactions to yield two molecules of three carbon compound pyruvate. And energy is released in the form of ATP and NADH. Glycolysis is the sole source of energy in mammalian tissues, renal medulla, erythrocytes, brain and sperm. It's a good fuel to the living organisms, especially anaerobic microorganisms. Glycolysis occurs in cytosol of the cell. The glycolysis has two phases. The first one is preparatory phase and the second one is phase. The reactions occurring in the first five steps are known as preparatory phase. That is the sequence of reactions from glucose to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Energy is required for this reaction in the form of ATP, which is utilized from our body. Then the 6 to 10 sequence of reactions are termed as payophase. That is, sequence of reactions from glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to pyruvate. Energy is released in the form of NADH and ATP. Now look at the reactions involved in the glycolysis. The reaction begins with the glucose molecules that enter to the cytosol of the cell. Step 1. The phosphorylation of glucose to glucose 6-phosphate in the presence of the enzyme hexokinase. Hexokinase transfers a molecule of phosphate from ATP to ADP and the reaction is irreversible under cellular conditions. Step 2. Glucose 6-phosphate is isomerized to form fructose 6-phosphate, catalyzed by the enzyme phosphohexose isomerase and also called phosphoglucoisomerase. Step 3. The phosphofructokinase 1, also called PFK1, catalyzes the transfer of phosphoryl group from ATP to fructose 6-phosphate to yield fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Reaction is under cellular conditions. ATP is utilized in this reaction. Step 4. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is cleaved to yield two different triose phosphates, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and aldose and dihydroxyacetone phosphate a ketose. Enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is aldolase. Step 5. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate is rapidly and reversibly isomerized to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase, also called isomerase. This reaction completes the preparatory phase of the glycolysis. Energy is utilized in the form of ATP. The hexose molecules has been phosphorylated at C1 and C6 and then cleaved to form two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Next is the payoff phase of glycolysis and it yields ATP and NADH. One molecule of glucose yield two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Both halves of the glucose molecules follows the same pathway in the second phase of the glycolysis. After the glycolysis, the net production of ATP is 4 mole of ATP, but only the net yield is 2 ATP because already we invested 2 ATP in the preparatory phase. Then come to payoff phase of glycolysis. Step 6. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is converted to 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate. This involves the addition of phosphate group at the first position of the phosphoglycerate. The enzyme that catalyzes the reaction is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, also called triose phosphate dehydrogenase. NAD plus is reduced to NADH which is further utilized in the electron transport chain to produce more energy. Also this reaction utilizes inorganic phosphate. Step 7. The 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate is converted to 2-phosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. 
This kinase enzyme transfers the phosphate group at the first position of the phosphoglycerate to ADP. In this process, a molecule of ATP is generated. Step 8. 3 phosphoglycerate is converted to 2 phosphoglycerate. It's a rearrangement reaction catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. Magnesium ions is also utilized in this reaction. Step 9. 2 phosphoglycerate is converted to phosphoenol pyruvate by the enzyme enolase. And the loss of H2O from 2 phosphoglycerate causes redistribution of energy within the molecules. Step 10. In the final step of the glycolysis, the phosphoenol pyruvate is converted to pyruvate by the enzyme pyruvate kinase. The phosphate group from the phosphoenol pyruvate is converted to ATP. So, energy is released in the form of ATP. These reactions are payoff phase of glycolysis and energy is produced in this phase in the form of ATP and NADH. Now look at the energetics of this reaction. Remember that one molecule of glucose yields two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Both the halves of the glucose molecule follows the same pathway in the second phase of the glycolysis. In this pathway, hexokinase and phosphofructokinase 1 utilizes two molecules of ATP. That's why we can write minus 1 in both of these cases. When we are coming to the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, we know that 1 NADH is equal to 3 ATP. In the case, we have 2 NADH are releasing, so which is equal to 6 ATP. Then we can write as plus 6. In the case of phosphoglyceride kinase and pyruvate kinase, here we have two molecules of both these enzymes. So that's why we have two molecules of ATP from both. When we are calculating the net yield of ATP molecules, we get 8 ATP from this pathway. These ATPs are utilized in our body for various metabolic purposes. I hope you understand this topic. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel and press the like button. Thank you all for watching my video.